Hello friends, welcome to War Wiki. Timeless Thursday is our series where we introduce you to some lesser known historic wars or some event that had a far-fetched impact. Today we bring you a battle that was fought in the 1971 war between India and Pakistan, this battle showcased an exemplary bravery of Indian forces, and shows how they managed to defend a very critical outpost against drastic odds and a very superior attacking enemy. It showcased the power of air supremacy over ground forces. It witnessed how the Indian air power absolutely decimated the attacking Pakistan forces in an opportune moment. Today we introduce you to the Battle of Long Diwala, which was witnessed in the Indo-Pak border of Rajasthan, right at the start of the 1971 war. We take you to the time of peril in East Pakistan. The then Chief of General Staff of East Pakistani military was Lt. Gen. Yaqub Ali Khan, who was a pacifist and he had kept a strong restraint on his armies. The political hostility between East and West Pakistan and a huge difference in their culture was no secret. During the uprising in East Pakistan and considering what was expected of him, Gen. Yaqub Ali Khan resigned, with him went all the restraint of the East Pakistan military. Soon began the reports of Pakistan military widespread genocide against Bengali citizens, particularly the Bengali Hindu population. The main perpetrator to these atrocities was Lt. Gen. Tikka Khan, the governor of the East, who got the title as the Butcher of Bengal. As established in post-war inquiries, Gen. Tikka had let loose everything at his disposal as if raiding an enemy, his armed forces were killing the unarmed civilians, fighting them like they were fighting regular armies. Tikka Khan had said to his armies, I want the land not the people. He was brutal and his armies ran rampage in East Pakistan. Looking at these atrocities on Bengali people, the then PM of India, Indira Gandhi had opened the borders for refugees, and millions of them fled East Pakistan to come to India. The state governments of West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Meghalaya, and Tripura, started establishing the refugee camps alongside the border. The flood of incoming refugees placed an intolerable strain on India's already overburdened economy. The Indian government repeated appeals to international community went unheard. Failing to elicit any response from international community, PM Indira Gandhi, on March 27, 1971 publicly declared full support of her government for the freedom struggle of East Pakistan. When she summoned and inquired from the Chief of the Army Staff General Sam Manik Shah, if India is in a position to go in a war and win it. The answer was, no. General Manik Shah explained, the onset of monsoon in East Pakistan and the fact that major chunk of Indian tanks were being refitted, it won't be an opportune moment to start the hostilities. Additionally he feared Chinese intervention in support of Pakistan. And he knew it will be stupid to fight a war with China and Pakistan on three fronts. Manik Shah did assure the PM, that if he is given time and freedom to do what he wants, he will get her the victory that she desires. With full support from the government, Indian Army started to prepare for an inevitable war. The Indian Army with Indian intelligence and with several defected East Pakistani officers, started to recruit and train conscripts from the refugee camps of East India. The planes and tanks were being refitted and being prepared to fight. During November 1971 there were far outcries in West Pakistan, rallies and public political meetings calling for Pakistan to crush India. Soviet Union warned Pakistan against the war, calling it a suicidal course for Pakistan unity. Indian Army too was ready for a war now, the onset of winter had caused the Himalayan passes to close due to snow, ruling out Chinese intervention from north and northeast. India started a massive military build-up on both eastern and western borders. Citing this on November 23, President Yahya Khan declared a state of emergency in all of Pakistan and told his people to prepare for war. On 3rd of December in a surprise preemptive aerial operation, called Operation Chengiz Khan, the Pakistan Air Force launched air raids on 11 Indian airfields in northwest India, using as many as 50 planes. The Pakistan Air Force attacked as far as Agra Air Base, which was 300 miles from the border, pushing Pakistani planes to the limit. Taj Mahal of Agra is made up of marble and can be seen from miles away on a full moon night, after this raid India decided to cover it completely in order to camouflage it. Indian Air Force retaliated with initial air strikes that very night and several others the next day. Indian Navy launched a massive assault in Operation Trident the very next night. Both the countries were at war. PM Indira Gandhi ordered the immediate mobilization of troops and launched a full-scale invasion of Pakistan. This was a massive coordinated sea, air, and land assaults from all sides. 
The main thrust of Indian Army was the capture and liberation of East Pakistan and to hold any assault or retaliation from the West Pakistan. Yahya Khan led by the same strategy as his predecessor, the defense of East Pakistan lies in the West. Pakistan knew any full-fledged confrontation cannot last long due to international pressure. So the plan was to capture as much foreign land in the West as possible, in order to use it as a bargaining chip against the East Pakistan territories, as the Eastern Front was sure to fall to Indian attacking forces. General Yahya Khan had devised a wonderful plan of shock and awe to penetrate deep into Indian territories and capture major landmass of Rajas then. Knowing that most of available Indian armor in the region was in Krishnagar. Pakistan 51 Brigade and the 22nd Cavalry, equipped with Chinese T-59 tanks, along with two infantry battalions were to cross Long Giwala, reach Ramgarh, and surround the Indian 12th Division situated in Tanat and Kishnagar facing Rahim Yar Khan. 38th Cavalry along with artillery support was to aim and capture the Jaisalmer Air Base. The plan was a great one, but hinged on two things, the capture of Long Giwala outpost, and more importantly how soon can it be captured, without reinforcements coming from either Kishnagar from north or Jodhpur from south. There was a great sense of urgency from Pakistan's side. The air strikes on Karachi fuel depot, and Bhutan radar base had severely crippled the movement and operation of Pakistan Air Force. PAF had indicated that they may not be in a position to give continued air support for this assault. On the night of December 4, the same night that Pakistan opened this western front, Indian Navy had launched Operation Trident, which dealt a major blow to Western Pakistani Navy. In subsequent days, Pakistan Air Force remained engaged here, retaliating and supporting Pakistan Armed Forces near Karachi. In spite of the knowledge that air support will not be possible, the Pakistan Divisional Headquarter gave a green flag and asked the Armored Division to continue their assaults for Ramgar and Jaisalmer. Indian intelligence completely oblivious to this brilliant Pakistan plan were caught off guard. Indian 12th Armored Division with artillery and infantry support was present in Kishnagar, they were to assault the Pakistan territory, and occupy the town of Rahim Yar Khan with great strategic importance. Long Giwala post was originally an BSF outpost, but considering its strategic importance Indians had positioned a single company of Punjab regiment there. The reason why only a single company was stationed in a strategic outpost was because the Indians thought that any advance from here is extremely unlikely. The area had loose sand terrain and was difficult for tank maneuverability, the rest of the 23rd Battalion was stationed at Sant Huala Post which was the closest defendable area, near the region where Pakistan armor had attacked during 1965 war. It was around 18 kilometers northeast from Long Huala. This single company in Long Huala, under 23rd Battalion of Punjab Regiment, was under the command of Major Kuldip Singh Chanpuri. He had established defenses occupying a high sand dune which dominated the area that was largely intractable to vehicles. Major Chanpuri had at his disposal, an infantry company of around 120 men, 8 camel mounted BSF soldiers, 1 jeep mounted 106mm M40 recoilless rifle, a handful of landmines and 3 anti-tank Piat. He did had artillery support from a battery of 170 field regiment, which he used flawlessly during the battle. Against this tiny force was the entire mobile infantry division with more than 2,000 men, and the 38th armored division with close to 50-odd Sherman and T-59 tanks. The battle odds were severely tilted on Pakistan's side. When initial reports of tank movement came from Major Chanpuri's company, the battalion HQ and the divisional HQ were taken aback. India's worst nightmare had come alive. The HQ knew that if the Pakistani armor break through, they can have a field day and can penetrate as much as Jaisalmer before actually facing any sort of meaningful resistance. Even if reinforcements are dispatched it would take at least 6 to 8 hours for them to arrive either in Long Giwala or Ramgar. If Jaisalmer falls, the complete division lose their aerial support. Considering the situation HQ immediately gave Major Chanpuri two options, a tactical retreat to Ramgar, or to lie low and hold the post until the reinforcement arrives. Considering his options, the Major made a very calculative decision to stay and hold the post. The Pakistani had mobile unit and tanks, whereas Chanpuri's unit did not have any transport. They would have easily been caught on by charging enemy. He rather decided to fortify his position and hold his ground for next 10 hours. The Jaisalmer Air Base was an forward air base which was put up few months back, unfortunately the air base just had four British Hawker Hunter aircrafts and few HF-24 Maruts, with 11 pilots on standby. The commanding officer was squadron leader Bawa. None of the planes in Jaisalmer had the capabilities to operate during the night. 
they could not come to the aid of Major Chandpuri until dawn. IAF had another concern. If Long Giwala falls early, with virtually negligible resistance in Ramgarh, Jaisalmer itself would have come under attack if Pakistan forces implemented blitzkrieg tactics. At such point the hunters and maroots were to be moved to a safer location. The dreaded wait was on. The Pakistani mobile infantry was few hours behind the assaulting armored division, on confronting a barbed wire near the Long Giwala post the Pakistan armored division halted, fearing it could have been a minefield. The Indians had not planted a systematic minefield that Pakistani feared. Pakistani forces called for mine sappers, later understood that there are no mines, they not only wasted couple of hours on it but also faced their first major blow of the battle. The full moonlight which was to be beneficial for the attacking Pakistani actually became useful for the Indians in the light of the moon and thanks to some fuel fire in Pakistan additional fuel tanks, Indian anti-tank recoilless gun, sitting on an elevated position was easily able to target stationary Pakistani armor. The Payat attack struck two tanks as well. Indian defense forces in Longiwala were able to destroy 12 Pakistan tanks while Pakistani could only destroy the jeep-mounted recoilless gun, with one of its operator dead. Looking at the fire from Indian end, Pakistan forces started to feel that their initial recon reports were wrong, and it's not just one company but entire battalion defending this post. Major Chandpuri used his artillery to perfection, he directed major artillery thrust towards the tank corps, causing them to distribute and move into loose sand areas. The Indian defense stood their ground entire night with losses as less as three soldiers and the anti-tank gun, while they inflicted major damage on Pakistani armor and infantry. What followed next was nothing short of clean sweep victory. At the first light of dawn the Hawker Hunter fighters came to the rescue. The Hunters are ground attack planes that India had acquired from the British. Mounted with 16 Matra T10 and 30mm cannon the Hunters literally annihilated the enemy forces. Tanks in a desperation tried to run helter skelter. This could have been seen from the top, looking at the spaghetti-like tank marking in loose sand terrain. The aerial attack continued not only that day but for next several days. The Pakistani armor and support vehicles were destroyed, some which survived were driven back from where they started. Indian sorties continued and even penetrated Pakistan airspace unopposed, inflicting damage on railway line and important support infrastructure in Pakistani Punjab region. This battle of Longiwala has great significance, had it fallen easily the entire Indian Western Command could have come under threat. Jaisalmer airfield would have fallen and Jodhpur Command Center too would have been jeopardized. Not to mention, the 12th Armored Division and Infantry at Kishnagar, and the 23rd Battalion Punjab Regiment in Sandhuala, would probably have been cut off, destroyed or captured eventually. Major Chandpuri was decorated with India's second highest gallantry award, the Mahavir Chakra. Several other awards were earned by members of the defending company, and the battalion's commander. On the other hand, the Pakistani divisional commander was dismissed from service. British media compared the Battle of Longiwala as to Battle of Thermopylae describing it the turning point of 1971 war. Field Marshal R. M. Carver, the British Chief of the Imperial General Staff, visited Longiwala a few weeks after the war to learn the details of the battle from Major Chandpuri. Several popular movies and series have been made showcasing this battle. This battle proved to be significant not only for outcome of 1971 war, but also in establishing the importance of aerial support in any battlefront. We will continue to bring you such amazing stories. Stories of heroism and brilliant strategy, stories of odd defying victories. Do keep watching and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Please do like and comment. Have a great day and support War Wiki.